Before the advent of environmental regulations, industry used chemicals haphazardly. Although, under current environmental laws, chemicals are tightly regulated and some are illegal to produce due to their toxicity, in the past, they were not seen as harmful to human health or the environment. In New England, where the American Industrial Revolution was born, legacy sites where chemicals were manufactured, used, and dumped dot the landscape. What prompted everybody's attention towards the Fletcher Paint site was the Keys Municipal Well. Through routine environmental sampling by the state of New Hampshire and others, they found uh, volatile organic contaminants in that municipal well, which caused a lot of problem because it provided drinking water for many residents in the town of Milford. They started to look for the contaminators, and guess what? Fletcher Paint was very close to that well, and that brought in the whole uh, study to it. This site is unique. It had been an industrial site since the 1800s, and there was a town dump buried underneath it. The Fletcher Paint Company had some side chemical businesses. They made pesticides, they made perfumes, and they made asphalt and roofing materials. EPA had to identify why there were so many PCBs associated with the paint facility because it wasn't typical. It was discovered that three companies were supplying a material called scrap pyranol, which is essentially a PCB material that comes out of capacitors or transformers. General Electric was Fletcher's largest supplier of this material. Fletcher's paint was bringing the scrap pyranol in and shipping it out in products for asphalt and roofing companies. Unfortunately, they had about 800 drums of hazardous substances placed on the parking lot, which was soil-based parking lot. The owners did not really know what the material was, and the drums were slowly rotting, and the materials were leaking out very close to the river, so that was a threat to the river, um, a threat to the ground and the general area. This site is located near businesses, residences, and an elementary school. The local Boys and Girls Club is just across the river. Once it was understood that Fletcher's paint was a source of the contamination of the Keys Municipal Well, EPA began work to remove the leaking drums and conducted preliminary soil sampling. EPA did this work in 1988 via removal actions. Removal actions are typically short-term actions, about six months to a year in duration, to mitigate a more immediate threat. Removal activity in 1991, 93, 95, and 2000 also allowed EPA to address risks and manage building demolitions, fence installations, and contaminated soil removal from residences near the site. Um, it's one thing if you stay on your site, but if you have to come into their space, they're very afraid. We took a lot of time to work through that, those fears. One resident, he not only lived next to the property, had contamination in his property, in his house, he worked at the site. So he actually had his blood tested and had seen low levels in his blood. Fletcher's paint was listed on the national priorities list or NPL in 1989. The NPL is another name for the Superfund program. Only the worst sites of pollution in America are ranked on the NPL and funds are available through Congress to clean up these sites. There's a number of um, entities that must come together in agreement to list a site for uh, NPL. In a lot of cases, a state discovers the site and assesses the magnitude of the problem. And if deemed necessary, the state will refer the site to EPA and request the site be ranked for the national priorities list. In order for a site to be listed, it must meet certain hazardous ranking criteria. There are many factors involved in this decision, including the types and levels of contamination and their potential impacts. Ideally, the proposed MPL listing is supported by the governor of the state, the municipality the site is located in, and the community members there. Once a site is listed, uh, the typical Superfund process will involve a lot of field work to sample for the contaminants that may have been disposed of there surface water and sediment sampling, soil sampling, air sampling. That information is used to compile a document we call the remedial investigation, which summarizes the contamination. Um, as part of that remedial investigation, we do a risk assessment. In the uh, original scoping, you try to figure out what receptors they're called, what, what people or animals will be exposed to the chemicals. We were concerned about cancer and non-cancer effects of the PCBs and uh, some uh, solvents as well, whether there were long-term chronic effects of these chemicals in uh, trespassers, child residents, adult residents, 
uh, construction workers. The ecological receptors were primarily fish in the river. So we looked at the effects on the animals themselves in the river and on wildlife or humans who might eat the fish. And so that scopes out the risk assessment. So when they went out of business in 1991, they left behind a large building full of hundreds and hundreds of drums and miscellaneous materials. Because it was both a paint manufacturer, you could have an area of lead or antimony or chromium in one area of the site. You might have pesticides in another from that business. We never knew what the sample would show us because we never knew you know, what may have been disposed of in a different area. Remedial investigation obtains the data. The risk assessor uses the data to calculate the risks. Then the engineers get involved in how much soil to take out, what is the method to remediate? The remedial investigation serves as the basis for the feasibility study. The feasibility study will evaluate the various options that are potentially viable for cleaning up the site, whether it's soil or groundwater or sediment. Um, that feasibility study then provides us the basis to propose a cleanup strategy, the public comment on, typically 30 days and then we write our cleanup decision or a record of decision that documents how to clean up the site. As the cleanup process progresses, EPA is tasked with other functions that move in concert to the cleanup. Part of EPA's job on Superfund sites is to ensure that polluters pay for the remediation of the site, which is done through EPA enforcement. EPA identifies the parties that are considered responsible for the contamination under the law and asks those parties to perform the cleanup. At the Fletcher's Paint Superfund site, EPA identified General Electric as the potentially responsible party, but GE contested. After the United States filed a lawsuit against GE, the company was found by the court to be a liable party. The second phase of the investigation is the pre-design investigations. That's pretty discreet. Instead of taking a few samples that shows high levels of contamination, you're taking 3,800 samples to look at very discreet depths of contamination, where is it pooling up? Um, you're looking for how the data would respond to the cleanup. Basically, we try to do pre-design work to design the remedy that was selected and ultimately clean it up and perform the cleanup. The site is composed of two, two areas, the Mill Street site and the Elm Street site. The, uh, both sites are in active uh, remedial action currently for the removal of contaminated soils, uh, contaminated with PCBs, uh, being transported off-site. Some areas are going all the way to bedrock and other areas are shallower. The site is evaluated on an ongoing basis for remedy protectiveness to make sure it still protects public health and the environment. During the early stages of the uh, soil excavation, we were detecting very high levels of PCBs uh, in the air, much higher than the project action levels that were established. So we worked with uh, the PRP General Electric and their, their contractor to figure out ways we could adjust the, uh, the way we were managing the site. Finally wound up with uh, com developing a new plan. Part of that plan required additional engineering controls. Some of those controls included spraying uh, vapor suppressing foam on the site. We also increased the amount of air monitoring that we were doing and the amount of air monitoring stations uh, that were needed on the project. The community is encouraged to participate in the cleanup process and engaging the community is a focus of the cleanup team. Um, we're going to start off tonight with a uh, quick introduction. My name is Cheryl Sprague. I work with the Environmental Protection Agency. I am the remedial project manager for the Fletcher Paint Superfund site. With me tonight is my boss, uh, chief of the New Hampshire, Rhode Island Superfund section, Mike Jasinski. The work really couldn't be done without interacting with the community. And on this particular site, we were literally within six inches of people's front uh, front doors, front steps, and that's where the excavation was happening. I, I think the community involvement coordinator, besides dealing with the community, is also intensely dealing with the, the team. We had our project manager, we met regularly, and one of the standing agenda items, one of the most important ones, is what are we telling people? How are we interacting with them? She understood that he was not gonna be able to do his job without essentially talking to people almost every day. As the site gets clean, the view of Keys Park and the Sauhegan River has the town looking at the space differently. And the town, who had always had an interest in a passive recreational use, but nothing fancy, has now become very energized 
in figuring out how to uh, really reuse the site in a way that, that benefits the community and reconnects a portion of the community to, this, to the Sauhegan River. And I know the city of Milford had been upset and impatient, understandably, over the years and now is very happy with the work that's being done. Since our enforcement efforts um, were successful, GE has been doing a great job in cleaning up the site and doing it fairly quickly. It's amazing to visit the site and see all the work that's going on. Right now, we're digging up thousands of cubic yards of PCB contaminated material at Fletcher's, and eventually this site will finally get cleaned up. That's why I joined EPA. I felt like I could contribute to New England by going through this process to get a site investigated, studied, cleaned up, and put back into use somehow. The former Fletcher's Paint Superfund site has become a public park for the citizens of Milford, New Hampshire.